chemistry is a chemistry or is like you are trying to study a living organisms using molecules. So in biochemistry, we are studying the chemical processes that are taking place in particular or in living organisms. So therefore, in a simple term, biochemistry is like a chemistry that trying to understand life using molecules. So biochemistry is not a combination of chemistry and biology. It's a different field on its own that trying to understand life from the molecules. So remember, life itself is started from atoms. The life, it started from atoms. So remember, an atom is the smallest particle of an element that usually take place in a chemical reaction. So here, remember that we have carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, and oxygen, they are atoms. So these atoms, which is carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur, they are the one that combined to produce what you call a molecules. Like for example, we have different types of molecule. We have molecule of an element and a molecule of a compound. So when you have an atom, like for example, when you have hydrogen and when you have hydrogen like this, hydrogen plus another hydrogen like this, we have what you call hydrogen molecule. So we have two molecules, sorry, two atoms of hydrogen that joined to produce a molecules of hydrogen. So a molecules of an element is when you have the same element, the same element, like in this case, hydrogen and hydrogen combined to produce a molecules of an element. So a molecules of an element is when you have the same element joined together to produce the molecule. So you have the same atoms of hydrogen, hydrogen joined together to produce a molecule. So this is called molecules of an element. Then we have molecules of an molecules of a compound. So a molecules of a compound is when you have, like for example, hydrogen plus oxygen, hydrogen plus oxygen to produce a molecules like water. We have H2O, H2O. So when you have hydrogen react with oxygen to produce a molecules, but in this case. Hydrogen and oxygen are not the same element that produce these types of molecule. So this one, we call it molecule of a compound. So we have two types of molecule. A molecule is when two or more elements are joined together. So, and we have molecule of an element and then molecules of a compound. So molecule of an element is when you have the same element joined together to produce a molecule. And then we have molecule of a, a molecule of a compound when you have different elements joined together to produce the molecule. So that is called molecule of a compound. So as I said, life is started from atoms. So from atoms, all living organisms, all life is started from atoms. So it's these atoms that now join together to produce molecules, and these molecules form what you call a monomers. And a typical example of monomers, we have something like, for example, we have amino acid is an example of monomers. Fatty acid is also an example of monomers. Then we also have monosaccharides, like for example, glucose is an example of monomers. We also have nucleotides, they are also example of monomers. So these monomers joined together to produce what you call the bigger molecules, which are macro molecules macro molecules as i said it means they are giants big compound the compound that have very large molecular weights so their molecular weight is very large so that is why they are called macro molecules means bigger molecules and examples of these bigger molecules that we are going to look at in this course is carbohydrates lipids proteins and nucleic acids so these are the macromolecules that we are going to look in that we are going to 
discourse from the beginning to the end of this course. So we are going to look at carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acid in this course. So these are the macromolecules. And then we also have, we also have another examples of uh, these macromolecules also joint to form what you call a supramolecular complexes. Look at it. We have macromolecules and these macro, these macromolecules also joined together to produce what you call supramolecular complexes. An example of supramolecular complexes, we have virus. A virus is an example of supramolecular complexes. That is why I remember from the basic knowledge of virus. Virus is considered as uh, it's not considered a complete living organism, but it possesses both characteristics of living organisms and non-living organisms. Because remember from the basic theory of self that there is no life apart from the life of self. It means that anything that is below cell, it cannot sustain life. So that is why virus and prions, they are not complete living organisms prions and virus, they are not complete living organisms. It's just a combination of some of these macromolecules with a non, with a non covalent interactions, like hydrogen bonding, Bondawell's force of attractions. So it's these kinds of molecules, which are carbohydrate, lipid, proteins, and nucleic acid that rearrange themselves to produce supramolecular complexes. And this supramolecular complex is also when you have different, different supramolecular complexes, they will join themselves and produce what you call organelles of the cell. So it means that from atoms, we have molecules, and from molecules, we have monomers, and from monomers, we have macromolecules, and from macromolecules, we have supramolecular complexes. An example of these supramolecular complexes, please try as, much as, uh, try as much as possible to be jotting this. An example of these supramolecular complexes, as I said, we have virus, we have prions, we have cytoskeletons in a cell, we have ribosomes. All these are examples of supramolecular complexes. And these supramolecular complexes also rearrange and organize themselves to produce cellular organelles. An example of these organelles of the cells, we have, we have mitochondria, we have nucleus, we have uh, Golgi body, we have uh, lysosome. All these are example of organelles of the cells. And then these organelles of the cells also rearrange themselves to produce what you call a cells. And then a cells also produce a tissues. And then different tissues form organs. And then organs form system. And then system, we have complete living organisms. So life started from cells. So it started from atoms. It started from atoms. So meaning that anything that is below this, uh, oh, sorry, the atoms, life is started from atoms. So it means that all living organisms are made up of atoms. So remember from basic chemistry, from basic chemistry, according to Dalton's law, Dalton's law, the Dalton's law said that all matter or matter are made up of smallest indivisible particles called atoms. So it means that even we human being, we human being, we are matter. So we are made up of atoms. So from this, you will understand that life started from atoms and these atoms form molecules and the molecules form monomers. And these monomers form what you call macromolecules. An example of these macromolecules, we have carbohydrates, we have lipids, we have proteins, and we also have nucleic acids. Nucleic acids, proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates will also arrange themselves to form another complex called supramolecular complexes. An example of these supramolecular complexes, we have virus, we have prions, and we also have cytoskeletons, we also have ribosomes. 
all these are examples of supramolecular complexes. Try as much as possible to be jotting all this so that at least you will have the basic information of all these things. Then, now, as I said, apart from uh, these cellular organelles, these cellular organelles are the functions of a cell. So without organelles of the cell, and there is no cell. And remember, life itself, life itself, it depends on cell. And we have different cell types in human being. In human being, we have different cell types. We have liver cell, we have brain cells, we have kidney cell, we have pancreatic cells, beta cells, and alpha cell. We have different cell types in human being. Like averagely in a human, in a human, we have like 220 different cell types. And all these different cell types have their specific functions. And then anything or any cell, even the disease that we are talking about, it started from cell. For example, now in a cell, if, if for example, the nucleus of a cell is being destroyed, it means that the cell itself is also be destroyed because like the nucleus, the nucleus, the nucleus is the nucleus is the, uh, what you call um, the heart of a cell. The nucleus is the heart of a cell. If the nucleus is not functioning, then the cell is also is not also going to function. This is just an introduction. And we are going to look at this thing very well when we come to discourse on cell. When we come to discourse on cell, we are also going to look at what the cell is all about. And then, so now the most important things, look at it here. I have a diagram here. You will see that in this diagram, we have, uh, look at it. If you now look at it, you will see that in this diagram, we have uh, what you call a cell. And from this cell, we have supramolecular complexes. An example of this supramolecular complexes, as I said, we have chromatin, we have plasma membrane, we have cell wall, we have virus and other things. And then we have macromolecules. And these macromolecules, we have, as I said, we have DNA, we have proteins, we have cellulose. And then we have monomeric units, which are the monomers. So ladies and gentlemen, the importance of this slide is to make us to understand that the life itself is started from atoms. So everything is starting from cell. So uh, life is starting from cell, but these cells are made up of an atoms. The cells are made up of an atoms. So life is started from atoms. That is why after we die, all our body fat will be destroyed. And even the atoms that are found in our body, they will also be disintegrate themselves. That is why I remember from nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle, that the carbon source, the nitrogen source are coming from the dead plant and animal. So it means that after we die, the carbon atoms, the nitrogen, the sulfur, oxygen, and all other atoms that, met, that make us will dissociate themselves. They will be released into the environment. And some of this carbon that we use in the photosynthesis are coming from dead plant and animal. So the importance of this light is for we to understand that the life is started from atoms. So from basic biology, we have what you call organization of life. We have what you call organization of life. So we have chemical level, cellular level, tissue level, and then we have organ level as well as the systems level. So these are the organization of life. It started from chemical. Okay, and then we are now moving to the next slides. So 
in human being in human being there are over 1300 enzymes and each of these enzymes is responsible for catalyzing a particular reaction so now in this case in this case 1000 and 1300 enzymes will catalyze or in a cell or in a human being as i said we have 1300 enzymes and this each of these enzymes is responsible for catalyzing one type of reaction so therefore we have 1300 reactions so the number of the enzymes reflect the equal number of the reactions that we are going to have in a cell or in a living organism. But in one minute or in two minutes, a millions of complex reactions are taking place. And some of these complex reactions we have or it's ranging or it's range from one, balance in endocrine system, Remember that endocrine system means hormones. So hormones are chemical messengers that brings about coordination. So these types of reactions or these kinds of complex reactions that we are thinking, that we are talking about, it include the production of the hormones, how it elicits the function in a living system. And after it elicit, like for example, let me take example of adrenaline. Adrenaline is an example of hormones that control fear, fight, that control anxiety, that also as well as the fight hormones. We call it fight hormones. So, the, so these hormones, after we produce it in our body, it must be degraded after it elicit it is function. That is why we are not always excited or we are not always in, remember, the importance of adrenaline in a cell is to make us excited. So this type of reaction, it involves the production of the adrenaline itself as well as the degradation of the adrenaline after its elicit it is function and then fueled utilization like for example we take food like glucose when we take food we take glucose and this glucose will be converted into atp and this atp is the energy that we are using in our body there is also immunity immunity our body generally fight infections and the infections or the fight of these infections includes a thousands of reactions some of these cells that are responsible for eliminating the infections it includes like t cells b cells and some proteins like cytokines ladies and gentlemen i'm going to stop this video now because my uh, Zoom is meant for 40 minutes. So we are going to rejoin again. We are going to rejoin again. Because after two minutes, it will automatically uh, remove all of us. Okay, sir. Now, before... Okay.